Hello everyone, welcome to Terrence Space Academy. We are here to prepare you for a future in the space industry. Principles of Rocket Science Understanding the Equations and Terminology I had started a course on building a spaceship, discussing the propellant mass ratio, mass fuel flow, fuel ejection velocity, specific impulse, and so on, when I realized that I have not made sure everyone is on the same page with these principles. Understanding the fundamental equations are key to having a good grasp of rocket science. So let's start together at the beginning and work through some fundamental concepts. We will start with mass. Mass will be defined as the characteristic of mass or energy to resist a change in velocity. The more mass you have, the more it resists this change by definition. It is my understanding that this resistance to a change in velocity is caused by the Higgs field and mediated by the Higgs boson, but we won't get into this. Now let's look at a common unit of mass, the kilogram. For those of you in the United States, you may have thought of a pound. This is an error. A pound is a measure of weight. Weight is the force exerted on a mass by acceleration or gravitational field. Einstein proved that when you're on the surface of Earth, where the acceleration towards the center of the Earth due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared, the effect on your body is exactly the same as if you were on a rocket ship in deep space accelerating at 9.81 meters per second squared. It is important to fully understand this concept. If you're in space and you have a mass of 100 kilograms and you push on a bowling ball with a mass of 10 kilograms floating next to you, the ball will move away from you at a rate 10 times faster than you will move away from the ball. If there is a really big ball with a mass of 100 kilograms equal to yours, then when you push on the ball it will move away from you at the same velocity that you are pushed away in the opposite direction. This is how a rocket moves in space. It throws mass out the back at a certain velocity, which, mass times velocity, gives a certain momentum. The law of conservation of momentum means the rocket moves in the opposite direction with the same change in momentum. The more mass you throw out the back and the higher the velocity with which it is thrown, the faster you go. Chemical rockets move an enormous amount of mass at a high velocity, producing tremendous thrust, but only for a short while before they run out of fuel and oxidizer. Ion engines throw propellant out the back at an extremely high velocity, but they can only process a small amount of mass. This gives them a lower thrust, but they can fire a long time before running out of propellant. Now let's look at the equations that describe momentum. The symbol to depict momentum is traditionally the letter P. The equation that describes momentum is P equals M times V. So momentum equals mass times velocity. The change in momentum for your rocket will be equal to the change in momentum for your propellant, factoring in that your ship is losing mass and getting lighter as it expels exhaust. Delta P equals delta P. One kilogram times 10 meters per second would equal 10 kilograms times one meter per second, in the opposite direction, of course. Now let's look at force. One of the equations for force is force equals mass times acceleration. Keeping track of the units is important. Force is measured in newtons, kilogram meters per second squared, while mass is measured in kilograms and acceleration in meters per second squared. Acceleration is a change in velocity over time. So going from zero to 10 meters per second over a time of 10 seconds gives you 10 meters per second minus zero meters per second over 10 seconds minus zero seconds equals one meter per second squared. This means that after the first second of acceleration, you are moving at one meters per second. After the second second of acceleration, you are moving at two meters per second. At the end of the third second of acceleration, you are going three meters per second. And finally, at the end of 10 seconds, you're moving at 10 meters per second. Always remember that a constant velocity does not create acceleration unless you're traveling in a curved path. Force can also be defined as mass fuel flow in kilograms per second times propellant exhaust velocity in meters per second. This gives kilograms per second times meters per second, equaling kilogram meters per second squared, or newtons, the same as the first equation. So if the acceleration due to Earth gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared, and our astronaut above has a mass of 100 kilograms, that would give him a weight on Earth of 981 newtons. Remember, weight is the force acting on a mass in a gravitational field or during acceleration. Acceleration, again, means a change in velocity. On the moon, this astronaut would have a weight one-sixth that of Earth, or 1.33 meters per second squared, 
times 100 kilograms equals 133 newtons. Great. He can jump really high on the moon, even with a heavy spacesuit on, because his muscles are adapted to Earth gravity. On the moon, he gets to be Superman. In deep space, outside of any effective gravitational field, the acceleration due to gravity is zero. So his weight is 100 kilograms times zero meters per second squared, or zero. But this is very important. His mass is still 100 kilograms. If you are in space, standing on a 100 ton asteroid, there's not much gravity at all. But if your 100 ton spaceship drifts at 0.1 meters per second down towards you, will it hurt you? Well, 100 tons is 100,000 kilograms times 0.1 meters per second gives a momentum of 10,000 kilogram meters per second. If you try to stop the ship from hitting the asteroid by standing under it and pushing with your arms, and you give yourself five seconds to get it stopped before you have to jump out of the way, it will have moved 0.5 meters in that time, which is about the length of your outstretched fingers to your head. So you'll have to push with 10,000 kilogram meters per second divided by 5 seconds or 2,000 newtons of force in order to stop the ship. If you have a mass of 100 kilograms and feel a weight of 981 newtons on Earth, you're going to have to lift with enough force to move twice your weight on Earth. Very few people could do this. This would be like pressing twice your weight over your head. However, if you were to let the ship come down to your shoulders and upper back and lift with your legs, most fit people could do this. But you better be sure how fast it is going and how strong you are. At 0.75 meters per second, few humans could exert enough force to keep from being crushed in time. What about in orbit? In orbit, the centrifugal force generated by your curved path around the Earth exactly equals the force of gravity pulling you toward the center of the Earth. These forces cancel each other out and you feel no net acceleration. This is free fall. You are not truly in zero gravity. The force of gravity at the orbit of the International Space Station is around 97% the same as on the surface of the Earth. If you went straight up into space to an altitude of 320 kilometers and hovered there, the gravity you would feel would be almost full Earth gravity. And when your ship ran out of fuel, you would rapidly fall just like normal. That is why rockets turn horizontally as fast as they can to get enough lateral velocity to the Earth to stay in orbit. If they increase their velocity relative to the Earth laterally, they climb in orbit. If they reduce their velocity relative to the Earth laterally, they descend in orbit. So remember, horizontal motion keeps you in orbit. Being in space does not negate gravity. Gravity has the exact same effect as constant acceleration. Acceleration is a change in velocity over time. Under constant acceleration, a mass experiences weight, a force acting against the mass in the opposite direction of travel or toward the center of a massive body. Mass is the same everywhere. Weight depends on where you are. Momentum is conserved. Throw something out the back of a rocket and the rocket moves forward proportional to the mass of the exhaust and ship. Throwing something out the back of a rocket creates thrust. Thrust is force. Force equals mass times acceleration or force equals mass propellant flow times ejection velocity. Ejection velocity divided by one standard earth gravity gives specific impulse. Specific impulse measures the efficiency of a rocket. It tells how many seconds one unit mass of propellant can suspend one unit mass of payload against earth's gravity. Ejection velocity equals specific impulse times one standard earth gravity. Hopefully this refresher will keep the concepts sharp in your mind. Refer to them often. Understanding the fundamentals at a deep level is the key to mastering any subject. Trivia can always be looked up in a search engine. Computers will always beat humans at calculation and data retrieval. It will be a long time before they develop understanding and creative imagination. Prepare yourself for a productive life in the future and in space by training your mind to be strong in these areas. Thanks for listening and stay safe.